This video is how to swap crypto in Bybit Web3 wallet. Up at the top, we're gonna to click Web3. That takes us over from the exchange over to now using blockchains with a wallet. If you don't have a wallet set up yet, I'll leave a link below to a video that goes through getting that set up because we can actually use multiple different wallets at the same time, all loaded within Web3. So if I go to wallet down in the bottom, I'm gonna use Bybit Wallet Custodial for this example. If I click that, you can see I've got two wallets loaded into this app. One is the Bybit wallet and then one is my keyless wallet. If you don't know what they are or you wanna know how to get set up with one, then watch the video below on how to get set up with a Web3 wallet with Bybit. But they all are going to be used in exactly the same way because we can control the keys here. So we're using dApps, we're using applications to swap crypto on blockchains and we can do that easily with any of the wallets that we load in here. So from here, what we need to know is what blockchain are we using and what are the assets on there that we want to swap. So you can actually see the supported uh, blockchains right here if you scroll around. I'll click the arrow down and you can see all of these. So if you want to uh, swap cryptos on any of these blockchains, you can do it. Essentially all of the EVM chains and Solana for right now, although they do add chains over time. From here, if we go to trade, you can see the markets right here. We'll look at swapping and DEX Pro, which is more like a kind of centralized exchange feel. In any case, we just need to choose the assets on the blockchain that we want. So where it says trending here on the right hand side, if you just click that drop down, what we can do is choose the assets that we want to trade on specific networks. So as an example, I'll choose base network and you can see the assets on base network. If we go over to Solana, you can see the assets on Solana. So all of these are supported. So we just need some uh, coins in there to pay for gas and have some value in there to trade one token for another. Before swapping crypto on a decentralized exchange, we need to make sure we have enough of the gas coin of that network to pay the transaction fee. On most of these networks, you're gonna be using Ethereum, but you can see that at the top of the deposit list anyway. So we're gonna make a deposit, so deposit here, and then what chain do we want to actually use? So on Ethereum, the gas coin is ETH, that's why it's at the top. If we go to BNB chain, the gas coin is BNB, so that's why that's at the top. On Solana, it's Sol. And on some other networks, it's also ETH, for example, Arbitrum 1. So I'm gonna press ETH up here, and this is my deposit address. If you're depositing ETH from another wallet or another exchange, just make the withdrawal to this address. This is your Bybit Web3 wallet. If you're using this with the Bybit centralized exchange, you can just transfer directly from your centralized exchange. So transfer from Bybit account, and then it's gonna populate my wallet address, and it says, hey, you've got some ETH in your centralized exchange, how much do you wanna send over? So we'll just send an amount over, and that's gonna say fine, withdraw, and then just go through that. So as long as you have some value in your account that you can use to pay for the transaction, we can use the decentralized exchange. We can also use that value to swap into other coins. I'll leave some deposit and trading bonus links to the centralized exchanges I use down in the description if you need those. From here now we've got some assets in our wallet, we can go ahead and trade them. Markets is just giving you an overview of the highest volume tokens and popular tokens, but we can drill down. So we're gonna to go to swap and then we can simply search for the tokens that we wanna trade. Up at the top where it says Bybit Wallet, if you click that, you can switch between the different wallets that you have here and use them all in the same way. From here, the from asset is the one we're selling and the for asset is the one that we're buying. So we're gonna click on this and I know I've got some ETH in my Arbitrum account, so I'll click the Arbitrum network. It's gonna show me my balance right here, so I'll click that. From here, we need to buy a token. So I'm gonna click this one on the Arbitrum network and you can see USDC right here. Now, if you don't, know that uh, the token is there or not, you can search for it. So I'm gonna search for USDC. And you can see I've got a balance here, but what if you didn't? And what if you didn't know the token that you wanted? Because you can see there's actually different versions here. What I can do is go over to a token registry, something like CoinGecko, search for the asset that you wanna buy, and then come down to the contract info, click the drop down, and search for the network that you wanna use. So I'm on Arbitrum 1, 0xAF8 is the contract address right here. So you can go over to the app and you can see 0xAF8 under USDC. I know that's the real USDC that I want. So I'm gonna click that. So what I'm doing is selling Ethereum and paying for gas with ETH and then buying USDC. So I'm gonna put an amount in that I wanna trade and it's gonna give me a rough calculation of what would uh, be the exchange rate. Now from here, we need to set our slippage settings. So down here where it says slippage, click that. 
and the gas setting, you can change this around as you want. Obviously, the faster your transaction is, it may cost you a bit more, but on most layer two networks and cheaper networks, it's not gonna be a lot. The slippage tolerance, this is the difference between the price quote that you get given and what is actually traded on the blockchain, the actual exchange rate. 1% means you're allowing a 1% worse trade than what you get quoted. If it's 5%, you may get a worse trade by 5%. For most tokens, especially large liquid tokens, it should be way under 1%. For smaller tokens, you may have to allow for more slippage. But in any case, 1% for this example, press save. Now from here, it says from ETH and then to USDC. If you want to swap this, we're going to press swap. Now in Bybit Wallet, right here, we just press swap and it will go through as a transaction. If you're using a different type of wallet, uh, like the keyless wallet, you may have to sign the transaction with your Google Authenticator or any other type of authentication that you've got set up with that. In any case, for Bybit Wallet, we don't need that. So I'll just press swap. You can see the details of the swap here and press confirm. And that should actually go through and swap on the blockchain. So you can see progress here, swap on Arbitrum 1. That should go through and actually swap the two tokens. So there it is. It's gone through and we've actually swapped it. So if we go back, uh, back to the wallet, you should see here Ethereum, my balance, and then my USDC balance shown up here. So that's using the swap feature. Bybit also have a feature called Dex Pro, which is the same thing, but it just looks a little bit more like a centralized exchange. So Dex Pro up at the top. From here, we just need to press the token that we want to buy or sell. So I've got some USDC, so I'll search for that. From here, we have a balance right here. So I'll click USDC and then we can sell USDC if we have it into another token. So USDC is the balance right here. We can change around how much we buy and sell. And we're going to be swapping it into ETH on the Arbitrum 1 network. If I click this, I can actually swap it back into any token that's allowed on the exchange. So any random token, for example, ARB, if I sell an amount of USDC, it's going to work out that exchange rate. In any case, we'll send it back to ETH. We'll sell USDC and we'll be buying ETH. And as you can see down here, you can set your slippage fees again. So that's something that you might want to do. And down here, you can see it says approve USDC. So if you get this, USDC is a smart contract. If you want to interact with it on an exchange, you do have to approve it in your wallet. That gives the uh, application approval to manipulate this contract. This is fine. This is totally normal. So if you want to trade that token, you have to approve USDC first. That's actually a transaction. So you press approve USDC. It would approve the transaction for you. Then you can go ahead with the trade. That's the same on all EVM networks. So sell the token into another token. And if you need to approve it, you approve first. Then after that, you can swap the token. But it's the exact same thing. It's just a different layout and a centralized exchange layout here. If you want to cash out of your crypto, you have to send it back into the centralized exchange. There you can sell it for fiat currency and then put it back into your payment method. So we can go to wallet and then send. So whichever asset that you want to send. So I'll click USDC here and send. And I can actually very easily put that into my Bybit funding account because the Bybit centralized exchange actually does support sending USDC on the Arbitrum network. So I can send that directly and then sell that USDC to a fiat currency. You can, of course, swap this token back into a bigger token first on the decentralized exchange if you want. Bybit and other centralized exchanges maybe won't support all tokens, especially smaller coins and you know meme coins and stuff. So what you'd have to do is use the decentralized exchange first, sell that token back into either a stable coin or the layer one coin, and then take the layer one coin and just press deposit back into your centralized exchange. If you need some more in-depth guides on getting set up with wallets, centralized and decentralized exchanges, those videos are below and the deposit bonuses down there as well. I'm James, it's MoneyZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.